My name is Dawn Masler. I'm actually a former biology professor at Broward College. But I, I'm a little bit, I'm going to age myself a little bit. When I used to teach here, there was an extra C in it. BCC? No, it's BC. So I don't know what happened to there. The C dropped out somewhere. How many, people, how many are taking science? Biology. Any biology? No, it's that extra. Huh? Next semester? Okay, good. Well, we're going to talk about the science of love, of like what happens to you, part of attraction. There's phases when it comes to love. Anybody know? Has anybody felt love? You felt love? What did it feel like? Test it, test it. Thank you. What did the attraction feel like? Felt oh, good. What did you feel? In what way? What did you have a physiological response? Not really. Okay. Who else felt attraction? What did it feel like? Felt like a rush. Okay. Yeah. So, did you feel? <laughs> did you get nervous? Did you have like sweaty palms? No, okay. How about the rapid heartbeat? Oh yeah. Okay. Did, did your eyes be bigger? Did you notice? I don't know if they got bigger. That's that's one way to tell. If you're in a bar or in an event or something somewhere and you meet someone and you think they're attracted to you, take a look at their pupils. If their pupils are real big, they're attracted to you. Yeah. <laughs> Seriously? Oh, do I lie? I'm a biology professor. Why does their eyes are too dark for you to see their people? You shine a light. But yeah, you shine. So excuse me. Shine a light, and then they'll, they'll shrink down, and so you won't know, unfortunately. So either way, you won't know. You have to test some other things. There's other ways to test. You're going to look if there is a rapid heartbeat. What happens when you fall in love, or when you're, actually, when you're attracted, your body produces? No? Well? Oh. Okay, here we go. I hit the wrong button. Norepinephrine. Norepinephrine is a fight or flight hormone. That's what gives you those butterflies, that sweaty palms, that rapid heartbeat. It's part of your fight or flight response. And it's basically telling you, pay attention. So is this love? No. No. Correct. What is it? Very good. You guys are good. You got this down. So what causes... What causes attraction? Do you know? Pheromones. Pheromones. They have a play, right? In. What else? They look good. They look good. Very good. They smell good. They smell good. How they dress. How they think. But now, have you ever saw somebody that was really attracted at a distance and you got up close to them and the attraction went away? Yeah. yeah. Why is that? It's because they're noisy. It's because your body has uses a subconscious response when it comes to attraction. Your senses come into play. So it's not really, have you ever tried to like someone and it didn't work? You can't mentally make yourself be attracted to someone. You can stop the attraction, but you can't cause the attraction. So I want to do some experiments and talk a little bit about what causes attraction, a little bit about love. Are you guys game for some experiments? Yeah. All right. These are interactive experiments. 
So the first one, I'm going to need a female volunteer. <laughs> oh, okay, I got a lot of them. They will be blindfolded. Did you did you say the um did we, we said earlier that you might want to do it or you want to do it or are you too full? Okay. All right. Well we we when you guys were filing in, I wanted to double check. So we've got a female volunteer that will be blindfolded. So if you can come up, Serena, my assistant, my lovely assistant, is going to blindfold you and walk you. So right now, just blindfold her. And in the meantime, so make sure you can't see. I need a couple guys. OK, you, you, you. No, you're going to be later. And then you, four guys. I'm going to have the guys stand up here, and then I'm going to meet Courtney. She's, I'm going to have my, tell me your name, Lee. 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 Lee, our lovely volunteer, is going to sniff each of our volunteers and rate their attraction of their scent from a score of one to ten. And then Courtney is going to write down the number, write it down big, and then hand it to the gentleman. Wait, I have, I'm missing one man. You. I thought you were going to do it. <laughs> I'm not, I'm not going to ask you your names because we don't want to, we don't want, to, your voices can have an effect to attraction. So we, we're going to just leave you standing here. Don't say a word. Don't try to trick and go, hey, baby. <laughs> no tricking. And then we're going to have her go ahead and sniff on each one. So go ahead and walk up to them. Just stand there. Yes, on a 1 to 10, 1 being the lowest, 10 being the highest. Don't feel bad because this is just with respect to pheromones. This is, we're actually, I'll explain what she's going to be sniffing for. And it has nothing to do with you guys. So trust me, OK? Right, we're, on we're on video cam, so I don't want to keep blocking the camera. Okay, so go ahead and bring her up for the first one. No, no fondling, just sniffing. up, down, yes or, just say yes or no. Now that you're looking at them, would your attraction change? Yeah. Yes. <laughs> okay, that's because, and that's, that's fine, that's perfect. Give them all a wild a great big hand. Great one. You might want to get her number later. <laughs> in just a second. This is actually her, what she was sniffing for as a woman. She was sniffing for major histone compatibility complex. These are proteins that are emitted in the air 
uh, and it's about your immune system. You are going to be most attracted to the opposite immune system. So that's one of the factors of attraction, but it's only one of them. So as you saw, she said her, her attraction changed once the blindfold came off. But that's also one of the reasons why you can look at, if you do like online dating, you see a picture of somebody and you're like, ooh, I like them. <laughs> then you show up at Starbucks and you're going, ew. <laughs> because once you show up in person, other parts come into play. So your nose takes a vote. That for females particularly, you're looking for major histone compatibility complexes. We're going to talk about pheromones too. So your eyes take a vote. So you're going to be attracted. But when you look at a picture, a different part of your brain values the picture as opposed to the part that values you in person. So you can get a different effect. Your ears have a vote. That's why I told the guys, don't say anything. Women are going to be mostly attracted to deep voices. That's why yeah, Barry White, Barry White, even after all these years, is still like the classic, right? Men are going to be most attracted to high voices. High voices. As, like a girl. Like a female indication of a higher octane. The interesting thing is, here's the weird part. When you are attracted to someone, you start emulating their voice. So if you're a guy, you're coming, hey baby. And then you see this nice little, petite little girl, and then all of a sudden his voice starts getting higher. <laughs> because that means he's attracted to her. So if he comes on real deep and then it gets higher, you, you know it's attraction. Those are indications of attraction. And the same thing with a woman. If a woman has a real high voice and she starts getting lower, it's not because she's a dude. It's because... Are you sure? Yeah. It's because she likes you. So that's a good sign, a very good sign. All right, I want to do one other experiment. Now that was major histone compatibility complexes, and that's for females. Now I want to do one about pheromones. She had asked, what is a pheromone? A pheromone are called octohormones. That means they go outside of the body and have an effect on people around you. There are several of them. One of them is there's a same sex attractant, there's a opposite sex attractant, there is a one that creates the dormitory effect where you know, you've heard about like women that are in the same place will like sync up their cycles. That's because of pheromones. That's that's a pheromone effect. A pheromone. It's, it, it's called a dormitory effect. Females, if you live together, their cycles will sync up. That's because of pheromones. So pheromones can also have an effect on men. Yes. <laughs> now, I know probably none of you have ever had to this, but sometimes a guy will be walking down the street, he's minding his own business, a woman call, walks past him that's ovulating, and he was like, what happened? <laughs> Next thing you know, his brain got hijacked, and he just starts following her, and he doesn't know why. Does anybody, ever have, anybody admit that that happened to you? <laughs> Gentleman with the, the bat? No, that's never happened to me, but I just found that, like, like hypnotizing to that effect, you can fall asleep. Well, I saw you going like this. Like. I just find that surprising. You can be hijacked. Actually, love is really about hijacking your brain. That would okay. be. So now I want to do another experiment. Where is my assistant? Okay, so I'm going to need some more volunteers. I need to have a man. No, no, what do I need? I need a man who will be willing to sniff some women. <laughs> okay, the, the gentleman who was jumping up in the back. My lovely assistant, 
Serena will will blindfold you as we as we get our volunteers to come up again. No sniff yet, correct. Sniffing only. Courtney is going to do the numbers again. So you're going to, again, you're going to do a scale of one to ten. One being the best smelling, and in ten, one being the worst smelling, and ten being the best. We're gonna, she's gonna walk you behind these chairs. One is the worst, ten is the best. She's gonna walk you, we haven't got the women up here yet. So, <laughs> the women are going to be sitting, so you're going to walk up to the back of the chair and smell like the top of their head. Okay? So let me, I need a couple of women. Yes? You? You.
copulins are secretions that women produce when they ovulate. That's a sex attractant. <laughs> so that's why he got such a high score. So when you go out, and you may have you may have experienced this yourself as a female. You may have gone out one week and everybody seems to be attracted to you. And you're like, I got it going on now. Has anybody been there? No. 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 <laughs> well, hold on just a second. Hold on a second. And then the next week you go out and nobody pays attention to you. What's happening is the first week you're producing copulates. So you're probably ovulating. The second week, you're not. So we, you're going to be mostly attracted during those time periods when you're producing copulins. That's the pheromone. Okay, D did you, you had a question? Um, I don't know if it's related, but like certain, like, oh, certain weeks you'll feel like, you know, you look the best, like your skin is kind of glowing, like when you look in the mirror, you just, you have like a really good week, and then the next week you're like, oh my God, why do I have to, like, what is life? Like, yeah. <laughs> That's Mother Nature. Isn't Mother Nature awesome? Mother Nature. <laughs> Remember, we're talking about just attraction right now. This is lust. So what basically is, is happening here is that when you are attracted to someone, your, your body is basically saying, this would be a really good person to have sex with. Well. <laughs> and when it's your optimal time to have sex, when you're most fertile, Mother Nature let's make sure your skin looks good, you got your you got your pheromones going, everything's clicking because that's your most optimal time. She's a little bit of a trickster. But we're not here just to talk about sex. We're here to talk about love. Is anybody in love? You're in love, Jeffrey? How long have you been in love? Two years. Okay. How about who's newly in love? You're newly in love, sir? Oh What's your name? Oh what is it? Kalu. You're newly in love? How long have you been in love? <laughs> now that's not convincing. You're like, I'm in love. How long? <laughs> okay. How about anybody more recently? Two years. Anybody? Love this sh within less than a year. You're less than a year? You were in love and you were coming up here sniffing those guys? <laughs> <laughs> it, giving that, that, getting that poor man's hopes up with the tin? Uh oh. All right, I want to do another experiment. We're going to be, this is kind of a type of an IQ test. So I need somebody who's in love and who's not in love. You can be not in love? Okay. You're, are you in love? Are you in love there? You are? Okay, we're gonna ask you, we've already had her in an experiment. How long have you been in love? Since last night. A month, perfect. Where's my, where's my other one not in love? I, my, whole, my whole place left. All right, I'm going to ask you a couple. I'm going to ask you a couple questions. Okay. So hold this. This is you. Nobody loves you. Aww. She's in love. Jesus loves you. Okay. I'm going to ask you some questions, and then you're going to you're going to answer them. But in order to answer them, you're going to have to blow on this to get instead of like. So the first one, the first one that makes the noise gets to answer the question. Does that make sense? So the questions are going to be behind you. You're not going to see them. So you're going to face forward. Everybody else can see them. You might do this. Blow that. See if you can make it. Not us. Yes. The blower. Okay. The first one that makes the noise gets to answer the question. Okay. So the, we're going to see if love has a cognitive effect. All right, so here is our first question. Ready, contestants? A farmer has 17 cows. All but eight die. 
How many cows does the farm... <laughs> January 1st, July 4th, December 31st, or October 12th? July 4th in Russia. Yes. I think this is actually the last question. Let me try. No, there's two more. What hotel chain is Paris Hilton most closely? <laughs> okay, okay. The Hilton. There you go. Yay! <laughs> two, two for nobody loves me. Okay. <laughs> last one. It's which is greater, one half of one quarter or one quarter of one half? Okay, no. <laughs> I'll take the other one. You take the other one? Are they, is it, is it one half of one quarter? One quarter of one half, or are they equal? Okay, well now they're equal. Okay. All right. Yeah, there were choices. That was it. Okay. Thank you. It was equal. They're equal. Yes. Okay, so our winner clearly is Nobody Loves Me. Very good. Give our contestants a round of applause. Thank you very much. He slobbered all over it again. <laughs> so why did that happen? She was thinking of love too much. She couldn't focus. When you fall in love, researchers at a Linden University discovered that parts of your brain actually deactivate. You lose cognitive ability when you fall in love. So if you're already stupid, you're screwed. <laughs> There's a lot, of, I call love temporary insanity. This is your brain. This, this is a nice, yeah, exactly. A nice, healthy brain. This is your frontal lobe. This is where you make all your decisions. This is the part of your brain that says, Should I go to class today? Yes. Should I skip class today? Should I? Yes. No. Should I go to the great love experiment? Yes. Exactly. That's the part of your brain that decides, that makes those type of decisions. When you fall in love, it's gone. Oh my God. <laughs> You lose the ability to judge. That's why you're attracted to this person and your friends are going. Exactly. 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 Neurobiologist Samir, si Samir Siddiq said, when deeply in love, we suspend those critical judgments that we otherwise use to assess other people. We are often surprised 
by the choice of a partner that someone makes, asking futilely whether they lost their leave of senses, have taken leave of their senses. In fact, they have. So like when your girlfriend falls in love with somebody and you don't like them, you keep telling her he's a scrub, but she won't believe you. She can't. The part of her brain that should be judging it is gone. Well, it, it, it depends. It can take other people. It can take people some time. And it all, one of the things that also happens is that your serotonin level drops. And what was your name? Kayla. Kayla mentioned that how she felt obsessed. When your serotonin level drops when you fall in love, it can drop to the level of someone with OCD. That's why when you break up in the middle of being in love, you can't stop thinking about it. You, next thing you know, you're standing outside their window going, are they in? You're checking their phone. That, I saw that smile now. I saw that smile. She, she's been outside, yes. Exactly. Yes, sir. Very good. Okay. Yeah. No, it's, yes, ma'am. It deactivates. Yes. Why? Well, that's a good question. That's that's between you and Mother Nature. Why would Mother Nature do that? I'm gonna I'm gonna talk about that in just a second. Let me tell you more about what happens, and then we'll, we'll muse about maybe why it happens. So that's not the only thing that happens. You lose other parts of your brain. You can still, you can still know, you can still stand up. Your cerebellum is fine. You lose part of your paradial lobe, your temporal lobe. This is the part where you lose the cognitive ability. That's why nobody loves me won the contest. And you lose the part right here. Does anybody know what, there's a part right here called the amygdala. Do you know what the amygdala does? Yes, sir. Yeah. Very good. Yes. Awesome. High high marks for BCC or BC biology education. Very good. Amygdala. That's part of your fight or flight response. So when you lose that, you lose the ability to sound the alarm. So, and you've also you've already lost the ability to judge. So you've got this guy or this girl, you're in love, you look in their trunk, you see a Dead body. What? <laughs> you see a, a sawed-off shotgun in a ski mask, and they tell you, "I'm doing winter deer hunting," and you believe them, and you're like, you praise them for their conservation efforts. You're like, "Oh, isn't he so sweet? He's taking care of the po deer population." That's why your girlfriends can see it, and they're going, "Well, why are you with this guy?" And you're like. What? Isn't he wonderful? I love him. Isn't he wonderful? He's amazing. What was, what was her name? Um, I can't remember her name now. What is the woman up in New York who snuck in the tools to the, to the, to the jail? Yeah. Uh, Joyce, Joyce. Her name was Joyce. Joyce. She's, she snuck in these tools. Why? Why? She was in love with one of the inmates. She said she was in love. She somehow believed, because of this effect, that she was going to be able to break out a murderer, sneak over to Mexico, and somehow live happily ever after. When you fall in love. Well, well, th 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 that's a very good question. I just did, uh, did anybody happen to go to the TEDx talk in Boca Raton? No. I just did a TEDx talk, which if, if you want, I'm gonna, I'm gonna pass these out. Actually, I'm gonna pass this out now. And there's a sign-up sheet if you would like 
if you sign, if you give me your email, I can send you the link once it comes out to the TEDx talk. I do a whole talk on how your brain falls in love. And it's different for men and for women. We don't have time to go over it today. I just wanted to, to talk about this today. But I'm also going to give you a sheet that says, if you like this talk, I'd like you to, to fill that out if, if you want to. If you like it, if not, you don't have to. But why does this happen is a great question. All right, so we, this is, whoops, that's the bad news. OK, that was the bad news. That's the bad news of what happens to your brain. Now, if we look at it, we know that when that you fall in love in a certain way, and then when you fall in love, this happens. Your cortisol, your cortisol level skyrockets. That's why you're so nervous. You can't eat. You can't sleep. You get lots of endorphins, which is nature's um, kind of like a the what is it like a heroin. So you're like kind of mainlining somebody. You are your serotonin drops to the level of someone with OCD. You and then parts of your brain deactivate. You got a lot going on. Why does this happen? There's others also some really good stuff. But from what I can tell is that Mother Nature is trying to show you what love is. So if you, look, if you think about it, when I was a little girl, and you guys probably had the same thing, who, who had a bike and your dad took the training wheels off? So did, when he took the training wheels off, did he just let you go? No, he ran behind you and held, held the bike up, right? Until you got your balance, right? That's what my dad did. He took the training wheels off and he came help. I had a little banana seat, you know, it was back in the day. And it had a little silver loop and he held that loop and ran next to me. And when I got my balance, he would take his hand off. And when, after a while, I got my balance enough where I could, I could ride on my own. I think that's what Mother Nature is doing when you fall in love. She's trying to show you what love feels like. She's saying that love doesn't judge. That's why she takes that part of your brain now. She says, love trusts. That's why your amygdala is shut down. And when you understand what love feels like, then she lets you go to love on your own. They've done some studies. They followed people that have been in love, and they discovered that the number one thing that every, all couples had in common, the only thing that all couples had in common was that their ability to maintain positive illusions. That means that the couples decided to choose to look at the good in the other person. Now, this, this love is only temporary. This shutting down of your brain is only temporary. Eventually, your brain comes back. And that's when you have to decide if you're going to stay in the relationship or not. That's probably my most important point of doing all this work that I've been doing, is that when you feel love, we think that's love. But it's only a temporary phase. And eventually, love becomes a practice. You have to make the choice. And when your brain comes back, all of a sudden, those things that were really cute that you didn't notice before, you start noticing. You go, you go to sleep one night, and there's this wonderful person. The next morning, you wake up, and they smack their teeth when they eat their breakfast. They, they're not as cute. All, all of a sudden, what was charming becomes alarming. You never notice this. All those things that your girlfriend said she should have been paying attention to, you start noticing. And that's why you need to pay attention when you first start dating, before you fall in love. You want to take your time when you're dating, not to just run in to falling in love, because your brain's going to go asleep for a while. And then you're going to wake up, and you're going to, now you're caught in this with another person. So you, you want to make those decisions early on. But here's the good news. In a way, love does make you smarter. Your brain produces nerve growth factor. All those other things happen, but you also get nerve growth factor and brain-derived neurotropic factor. That increases neuroplasticity. So now you are tapping into parts of your brain you didn't know before. Now, some of these parts might have bad memories, but now that you're in a loving relationship, you can work through some of this. But it also increases your brain power. So you're, you're going to be more expansive, more creative. So in a lot of ways, in this way, love is a grand illusion, is a, is a wonderful thing. 
So that's really what I wanted to talk to you about. I wanted to have a little bit of fun with you today, but I also wanted to explain that love is actually in phases. And it's not just one thing, and it's not something you just happen to fall in love with or fall into. It's something that actually occurs as a process. You go through a dating process, and if you make the choices that you like this person, you're going to fall in love with them. And then when you do, their brain's going to, your brain is going to change for a while, and but then it will come back. And then that's when love becomes a choice. Does that make sense to you guys? Okay, I usually get a lot of questions, so I'm gonna take some questions, and I see the hand in the back. Let me walk over here. Yes, sir. How do you make someone fall in love with you? Ooh, that's a good question. So, now I'm talking about heterosexual love. So there's, there's different ways, there's, there's a, um, homosexual love and heterosexual love. And it's interesting, when a man meets a woman, his testosterone shoots up. Doesn't mean you, you feel energized, you're like, woohoo! That's that, it, that, that's that little perk up you get. You know, and, it, and then all of a sudden you're like, want to fight with your friends. Because you're like, get aggressive when your testosterone goes up. When a man falls in love, his testosterone plummets. So it can be difficult sometimes when a, when a guy is, he's got to choose, he's got to make a cognitive decision to fall in love and risk dropping that testosterone. So if he's got to finish school or start a business or get a partnership or do something, he may not want to risk falling in love because he needs that energizing effect of testosterone. So there is, for a woman to fall in love is different from a man to fall in love. And if you really want to find that out, uh, sign up on that sheet and I'll send you that, you, that TEDx talk because it's a 15 minute talk about how it works, okay? Yes, sir. Um, you were talking about just now the, that if you wanted to like start a business or something like that, it's not good to fall in love. Well, is there a way that you could counteract that effect? Is there something like you know? I don't think that it should be fair that a man should have to like choose between them. So I'm just curious. Would, would you recommend anything? For if I was a man. If you well, if you were recommend, if you recommending something. <laughs> Well, it's a decision, it's, a cog it's actually a cognitive decision that has a biological effect. So you are, you are the boss of that effect. But here's the good news. So you can decide not to fall you in love. You can decide not to fall like in love. Like no, like no. Yep. Men can make a conscious decision. Women don't have that luxury. Uh, and I said, look, look, <laughs> sign up for the TEDx video if you want to find out about that. Um, but, one of the, the good news is that Mother Nature, she's, she's tricky, she's clever. When your testosterone drops, it doesn't stay low all the time. It's high in the morning, and right around five o'clock when the other guys are going out, yours is dropping. So you don't feel like going out, you're gonna go home. And that's how it works. So you still have enough to like, be able to do stuff during the day, but if you need that extra, you, you can lose that extra. All right. Yes, sir. I just wanted to know, do you believe in love at first sight? Oh, that's a great question. Does love at first sight exist? Now, I just told you about norepinephrine, right? Norepinephrine, that smell and all that stuff, that's norepinephrine. There's an actual process for you to fall in love that causes your brain to deactivate, which takes time. So you can feel like it's love at first sight, but all it is is that norepinephrine, which is that fight or flight response, it's temporary. Now some people make the mistake and think it's love at first sight. So does anybody uh, know Pamela Anderson, the Baywatch? Yes. You, and I think it's 1995, she met and married the rocker Tommy Lee. They met and married after, within 96 hours. So they met like Friday and Monday they were married. Because they thought it was love at first sight. Unfortunately, it was norepinephrine, the fight or flight response. So what they ended up doing, in order for you to keep feeling like it feels like love, you have to keep triggering that response. And what does that entail? Drama, drama. So they were up and down, up and down in the relationship. They finally, after three years, Tommy Lee got arrested for domestic assault. He spent four months in prison, or I'm sorry, jail. And then when he got out, he said, we're gonna try one more time. 
He said, we only tried it 801, 800 times. 801, here we go. Of course, it didn't work, because in order for that to work, it has to be this stressful fight or flight response. So you tell me, does love at first sight exist? <laughs> it's a negative way. Uh, you could be attracted at first sight, and sometimes that will turn into love because you start dating the person and investigating. The mistake is when people think it's love at first sight and they jump right into the relationship. Well, like, so, like, like shows like marriage at first sight, it's not necessarily. Well, marriage at first sight is interesting. It's a, it's a, it's a social concept. But that's more like an arranged marriage. And remember I told you, eventually love becomes a choice. So they're basically skipping over all the whole process and going at the end and choosing. And you can choose somebody to love. It becomes a choice. Right. Since love is a choice and it's a cognitive decision, can you cognitively decide to fall out of love with somebody? Absolutely. If you discover something, and it, if it's something like for example, you looked in the trunk and you saw the shot off shotgun and it, it finally registered that this might be a bad person, it will stop. Your body will stop. It will take a little bit of time for your brain to come back online to get right, but you can veto. You always hold veto power. All right, there was a couple over here and then I'll come back. Um, is there such thing as like true love, like that fairy tale? Not fairy tale, but you can't be in love with like more than one person, or do you have like a soulmate, mm -hmm. like that you're only supposed to be? Okay. That's a great question too. And from what I could tell from my research is that when you fall in love, love is really about a growth process for you, and that's one of the reasons why you've got all these nerve growth factors that are occurring. You're in Mother Nature showing you what love is. And sometimes that love ends. And that love doesn't end because you failed. That love ended because you needed growth in another area. So when you fall in love again, you continue the growth again. So you're, you're really changing and growing. And sometimes you're not meant to be with one person your entire life. So I wanted to go back to what this, uh, your answer to what that gentleman asked. And I wanted to try to figure something out for myself personally. So I know right now I'm single. And I was going out with my homies pretty much every other day. Now it gets to the point where right around 8, 9 o'clock, he hits me up. Hey, bro, let's go bowling. I'm like, eh, I think I'm going hit, to hit the bed. So I'm starting to feel, and like, this is in the last couple of weeks, I'm starting to feel as if maybe is it my testosterone is, is tapering off. And why would that be considering the fact that I'm all the way single? <laughs> How old are you? 27. Well, men, your testosterone naturally drops. It will drop as you get older. You're still really young where it would... Yeah, I mean, I feel tired now than it was a couple years ago. Right. But do you have a lot more going on in your life? Well, that's a lot. Work in school is a lot. So eventually that's going to take its toll. So that may be... When you're really got a lot going on in your head, that's what's going to, because you're, you're taxing your brain right now. And if you're taxing your brain, you're going to use those resources. It's not as much fun to go out because you've, you're using those resources for other things. And that's probably what it is. I wouldn't worry too much about it. So when, when that girl sniffed you and gave you a 10, did you feel good? Your testosterone's fine. <laughs> Yes, ma'am. What's the difference between infatuation and love? Oh, okay, infatuation and love. In fact, infatuation oftentimes is not reciprocated. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so that's where you fall in love, but the other person doesn't. And how, I didn't talk too much about how a woman falls in love, like I said, to sign up for the TEDx video, but one, what happens is that a woman falls in love by two neurotransmitters. One is oxytocin, and that's like the cuddle hormone. So if you're thinking about somebody and you really like them, and then dopamine is if you get excited about it, you can actually cause yourself to fall in love without the other person feeling in love. 
and then that can have an effect on your brain, which causes the obsession. In fact, the, one of the researchers said that that effect may be part of the thing that people that fall in love share with stalkers. So all of a sudden you're like, I really want to be around this person. I, and that's the infatuation. And you can't, it feels difficult to break it. And one of the ways you can break it is you want to get, get an oxytocin source from somebody else. So spending time with your girlfriends, doing stuff like that, when you stop isolating, get a dog, get a, you know, you increase your oxytocin source and your dopamine source, having fun. If, you're, if you start having fun outside of thinking about that other person, it'll break that pattern. Okay? Yes, ma'am. I can get to you. For a man, is something cognitively wrong with him if he can't <laughs> if he can't keep one girl like for a very long time? Oh, okay. <laughs> okay, so for a man to fall in love, I told you a little bit that for a woman to fall in love, it's dopamine and oxytocin. For a man to fall in love, it's a different set. But one of them is dopamine, and they have to raise up high enough. So dopamine is, uh, has something called the Coolidge effect. Coolidge effect, you know President Calvage Coolidge, you guys heard of him? Yeah. Okay, so President, the story, the legend goes that President Calvin Coolidge was out, in her, was doing a tour of a chicken farm, and he brought Mrs. Coolidge with him. And up ahead, Mrs. Coolidge noticed this rooster, and the rooster was being quite amorous with this hen. And she, Mrs. Coolidge said to the attendant, she goes, oh, look at that rooster. Is he like that all the time? And the attendant says, yes, ma'am, all day, every day. And she goes, really? You got to tell President Coolidge that. So the attendant goes back and says, President Coolidge, your wife wanted me to point out this rooster. And he looks over, and the rooster's having his way with this hen. And the president says, oh, I see, son. Is that rooster like that all the time? He said, yes, sir, all day, every day. And he goes, ah, that's what I thought, son. He goes, let me ask you another question. Is it the same old hen every day? <laughs> the attendant says, no, sir. It's a new hen every day. He says, go back and tell Mrs. Coolidge that. <laughs> For a man to fall in love, his dopamine has to go up. But... His dopamine is subjective to something called the Coolidge effect. We can see this in the lab. I can take a box of rats, female rats, and throw a male rat in with them. The male rat will have his way with all the female rats to the point of exhaustion. He'll fall over to the side. They can lick and entice him and try to get him going. He won't budge unless I threw a new female in. Then he's up and at him and going back in town. That's what happens with a male's dopamine. It can go up and down, especially when sex is involved. Oh, do, no, uh, am I already out? Oh, okay, um, sorry. W was she, Just you're... make sure you guys sign the, um, the clipboard and don't have your information. So. Yeah, if you, wanna, if you wanna send the TEDx talk. Um, we, if you have a... I was asking to see if you guys wanted me to have, come back and like do. Did you guys enjoy this? Yeah. This talk? Do you think these things are beneficial? Okay. Come back. This generation. Well, I think we need a longer one because I can explain more about how like the the who works. or how they fall in love. Okay. Well, I'll send you the video as soon as it comes out. It should be out. Well, there's, that's... <laughs> Women, it's harder to make a conscious decision not to fall in love. Actually, it's easier for a guy to make a conscious decision not to fall in love. It, it, 
Well, here, here's the thing about falling in love. One of the, one of the hormones, the neurotransmitters, is dopamine. So you have to be excited. And it's, it's the, the hormone of reward. So if you don't think it's exciting and you're going to win the big reward of life, and you probably have been there where you like somebody, but it just wasn't quite enough. You, you tried to like, oh, why can't I fall in love with this person? You're not just not excited enough. So once you get excited, once you think you're going to win the award for life, that's where the dopamine really kicks up. And then we throw in some oxytocin, which is cuddling. And once you become sexual, that's where the oxytocin really skyrockets. So that's where women can oftentimes get in trouble, which doesn't have the same effect on men because he has the Coolidge effect. So, so in conclusion, what I got is He's concluding me. <laughs> in conclusion. In conclusion, basically, there's no real love or as love is temporary because after a certain point, you choose. Oh, I don't want, to, I don't want you to think that love is temporary. Love is wonderful. No, no, one, I'm serious. You're basically, when, you're, when that's happening to your brain, it's basically just showing you what love really is. But, of, of it, right, but when you fall in love, when you fall in love, it's so easy because your brain has been deactivated. But eventually, you need to get your brain back. Mother Nature can't leave you like that because you have to be able to like, take tests like this poor woman that was in love. You know, yeah. <laughs> you, ha you need your brain back. So she, she gives you your brain back, but she's showing you what love really is. And love is really about caring about another person, about looking for the best in another person, and then also making a decision, trusting another person. And that's what I really want you to take home with. You can find love that lasts a lifetime. And I think that's what Mother Nature really wants you to do. Unless, of course, it's detrimental to your own personal growth, then it may end. But you, you can keep growing in the relationship and have an amazing life with somebody. I think we are spo I mean, we're definitely supposed to be. And one of the things about attraction is that you're most likely going to be attracted to somebody of opposite. Remember the major histone compatibility complex? You're, it's your opposite immune system. So you're going to be attracted to the person with opposite immune system and also opposite qualities. Because Mother Nature wants you to incorporate those opposite qualities. It's about expanding you, you becoming bigger as a person. So oftentimes when your brain comes back, you see differences. And that's where you really need to practice about not focusing on the differences and accepting the differences and bringing them into you. Okay. That's really the message I hope that you bring home. Did you guys enjoy this? Yeah. Awesome. Well, I'm so glad. Thank you for allowing me to have me here.